Hey everybody, Darren Austin Hall here bringing you another Wisdom Warrior transmission and it's been a while since I've, I've posted anything on my YouTube channel or done one of these Wisdom Warrior talks. Um, yeah, I've decided pretty much to take a bit of a more moderate usage of uh, social media aside from at least posting these videos. I've been pretty engaged on Instagram and such but stepped away from Facebook and um, yeah there's a lot of reasons for that I finished the presence process recently which was a 10 week meditative deep dive which was really really profound and I decided to really be a bit of a hermit with that and yeah I've been in Costa Rica since January during this this crazy year of COVID and pandemic and pandemia pan, pandemania and everything and I've been really focusing on on some really beautiful expression in art. So I've been working on this this double album called Honor of Creation, which if you follow me, you probably heard me talk about. And I'm working on a book <coughs> called Earth Night, as well as launching uh, a deeper <coughs> school called Gaia Awakening, which will be about eco spirituality and reclaiming the goddess, which is also what the album Honor of All Creation, this double album, is all about too. Um, and then I also received uh, a crazy uh, smear, smear post about me back in June, which I'm not going to get into in this video, but it was quite uh, disheartening to witness this viral uh, attack. And I was already kind of feeling like I wanted to leave Facebook before that, just from the broad censorship of that platform. Um, and also just witnessing how crazy the algorithms are and just distorting and social engineering us and pitting people increasingly uh, against each other in divisiveness. And I was also, since COVID hit, you know, I was really disheartened by how the obvious fear of the pandemic, coupled with the lockdown and people being cooped up inside, and, and clearly we were all taking a slide with our mental health, that there was just increasingly this like bifurcation online and arguments and people attacking each other and I wasn't innocent of that and I just found it really draining to be engaged in Facebook particularly uh, with all these debates and, and sometimes just being so viciously attacked and uh, I just wanted to share that it's been one of the best decisions of my life <laughs> to get off of Facebook in that sense. I'm not officially deactivated, but I've logged out, uh, taken the app off my phone, and I pretty much just use Messenger. And I just want to put it out there for people that I really, really, really recommend that you do the same. I know there's all this talk that, you know, we need Facebook to share ideas and gather groups together for initiatives, uh, and I, I just think, no, we don't. <laughs> and I think, you know, there's the idea, of course, with business and event promotion. Okay, I can see that in a way, but to me, it's all an excuse. There's so many other ways um, to promote yourself. And, and I also want to acknowledge that, that that fear, that anxiety of stepping away from Facebook, I felt that too. And that's why this vicious attack that uh, I received with my friend Jesse was such a blessing actually in the end because uh, it was really like the final straw that uh, broke the camel's back for me and uh, these two months that I've spent really off of Facebook have been incredible. It's given me so much more space of mind and peace of mind and I just want to encourage others to do the same. I think Facebook is really being weaponized right now with the censorship and the algorithms to literally keep us distracted and divided. And I don't think that's serving us in any capacity. So just wanted to shoot that out there if you feel invited. Uh, as I said, I'm on the other side of it now and it's an absolutely amazing thing. Um, I probably will start to re-engage with it in a very, very meager way. Um, at some point, uh, I'd like to address the attack that happened and, and share my side of the story, which I haven't yet but uh, I'm taking my time you know it feels good right now to be hovering 
in, in this beautiful space in Costa Rica with the art that I'm making and I'm really passionate about this art. These are things I've been dreaming about for years and I'm really pouring my heart and soul into this album. Uh, I'm working with this fabulous producer, Stefan Key. And uh, just a bit more of an album update on that because I know that my communication has been sparse and I had initially suggested there would be an official release on the summer solstice June 21st, which obviously didn't happen. Um, we've decided now uh, that we're going to actually release the album on the winter solstice, <laughs> which I know is like four months away. And trust me, I myself, I'm like, I just want to share this music with you because it's honestly the songs that we're making. It's some of the most powerful music that I've ever made in my life. Um, but I really feel that um, the remainder of this year, the, the, the seeming chaos that is going to be driven at us through the media, and social media is just going to continually ramp up leading up to the US election and I really just don't feel and this was actually advice from a sagacious friend who said you know this this doesn't really feel like the best environment to be sharing um, really beautiful new projects and I really leaned into that and it felt really right you know this um, this album is very very special it's 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 almost you know not to sound too pretentious, but it's almost like the birth of um, a culture in a way. Uh, because I've also got an online online course that will link with the album, so the 22 songs, if that's what we find at the end, the 22, quite robust. Uh, we're going to actually create an online course where every song is going to have its own page, and it will have a spiritual teaching attached to it, because every song is, is dense with that kind of meaning. And there'll also be a ritual uh, meditation invitation to use the music for. And I'm also going to be featuring some beautiful art from uh, Sue Cortez, who's a friend of mine who's working on the album art. She's uh, this beautiful Colombian artist. And uh, my friend Maria Fazio, who's this incredible photographer. And she uh, has agreed to um, share a lot of not only the photo shoots we've done for the album, but a lot of her photography in general she captures nature so beautifully and it goes with the eco-spiritual theme and her artwork is going to her photography is going to be also featured in this beautiful um, website that I'm I'm just starting to design and then on top of that there's actually going to be another online course called Guy Awakening that I'm starting to just structure and write content for um, that will be about stepping into this uh, more eco-spirituality, which is truly the, the chapter that I'm turning over in my life. Uh, sound healing has been my MO for the last decade, really, and I'll still be running the Source Resonance trainings in the future. We've got two booked here in Costa Rica in the new year. We'll see how traveling and all of that plays out. Um, but truly, uh, you know, I'm 41 now, and I'm now at a phase of my life where I really want to step into a deeper um, aspect of myself, and that is this work that I've been doing for the last 10 years of my life, mm -hmm. initiated by my work with First Nation Indigenous Elders, has been about reclaiming uh, the European Indigenous identity, but it went, the, my, my, my odyssey has gone much deeper than that. It's been about reclaiming the sense of the goddess, um, and as I said, eco-spirituality, providing a kind of spiritual meaning to the environmental crisis and I really feel passionate about this and um, it's my dream um, to here in Costa Rica to procure some land to start um, not only an eco-village but to open up a, a center of education uh, around reconnecting to the earth in this kind of eco-spiritual way so there's a lot coming through the pipe and that's one of the other reasons that I've been sort of taking my time. I think it was Emerson that said a quote like, don't hurry, look at nature, nature is patient. And that's been kind of my mantra, and I'm just really feeling into that. And I think for the rest of the summer and the fall, I'm going to be really enjoying slowing things down. We're in, we're in the rainy season here in Costa Rica, which is really a great yin and slow time. And I'm honestly feeling happier than I've ever felt in my life. I feel so driven and um, just a pure channel. I think, as you can see around me, I'm really blessed to be living in absolutely beautiful natural environs and that's one of the reasons I wanted to move to Costa Rica in general was I really got a message from Spirit in a Temescal ceremony last year that Mother Earth is very loud here and, and that was one of the reasons I needed to make this kind of my new home. 
So obviously COVID's like sped all of that up. Um, and I also want to share with the album, I, I just received a first cut of the music video for Oh My Goddess, which is the first single of the album. And it's absolutely beautiful. And it was made by this beautiful couple, uh, two ladies from Costa Rica and Colombia as well. And man, they did such an incredible, incredible job. And we're hoping to release that um, probably around the fall equinox. So it might be a bit of time still, but just to let you know that it's, it's really extraordinary. And I think you're all gonna really love it. And I've just commissioned them to make another video for a track on the album called Gaia, which is actually one of the oldest songs of the album. It's a song that's been with me for about 10 years. And it's a sonic prayer to the goddess that is Earth. And it's one of the most beautiful songs I've ever done. And really excited um, about all these things that are coming to fruition. So I uh, just wanted to share those updates and, and just on, on a more of a global perspective thing, which is more what Wisdom Warrior chats are all about. I just wanted to also share that, um, you know, we're, we're entering into a phase of reality right now where a lot of truth is being exposed. And 2020, you know, I, I've heard this kind of ironic thing that 2020 is the year that we come into 2020 vision, like perfect vision. And that although it seemed a little cheesy to me at first, it, it actually seems very fitting. You know, the more I'm witnessing, especially around COVID, I just watched the Plandemic uh, documentary. And I want to say, obviously, that interview with Judy Mikovits was incredibly censored and banned. And, and that was really detestable to me, notwithstanding whatever you feel about what she was sharing. But um, we're in an age where banning and censorship is all of a sudden okay under the guise of a pandemic. And I think it's very clear and obvious to people at this point with the amount of health ministers, scientists and doctors who have come forward and, and just the sheer numbers that are coming out of like institutions like the CDC in America and even the World Health Organization itself, that COVID-19 is, is really just a really bad flu. It's not at the level of virulence that we needed to respond with this kind of pandemic. And I'm becoming increasingly convinced that this is almost designed to wake us up, you know, to show us that as our governments increasingly, especially in places like Australia and New Zealand, are ramping up totalitarian measures, uh, I think this is part of some deeper thing that's going on where it's just like, how much can we be pushed until we say enough is enough and we actually stand up and, and take ownership of a greater level of our empowerment and say no to this kind of techno tyranny and fascism that's being enabled around us. We, we need to really stand up against it and and it's happening and I'm really excited about that um, I think this is uh, this is um, an amazing thing actually that's happening um, although it's very chaotic right now but we really needed to shift you know this is a huge shift we're going through an initiation right now initiation on a collective level and remember initiations are always about a death and then a rebirth a death and a rebirth they are literally a spiritual ordeal and oftentimes in more traditional cultures they were initiated you know by ritual elders they would put the young men and women through these initiations and they were quite harrowing um, really harrowing initiations. sometimes it involved um, drinking a psychotropic plant or even getting like a venomous bite from like a, a snake and it would put you in a kind of life and death scenario to jostle you to scare you sacred to really um, through adversity bring out uh, a potentially dormant side of your strength that you're unaware of and to really you know offer you this threshold to cross between you know the utopia of childhood to the more sober environment of adulthood where you are tasked to be responsible for society and greater aspects of culture um, I'm going to stop this video here, but I'm going to create a part two because I really want to fit these under 15 minutes so they can fit on that that IGTV type of scenario, which I think is only 15-minute um, videos. So I'll continue in part two on that theme. And truly, that's uh, what we're being asked uh, to do right now is to mature as a species. Um, you know, something that this documentary Plandemic um, showed, and there's a lot of amazing documentaries out there like Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind by Stephen Greer is another great one that came out this year. 
Uh, and you can go back and watch beautiful documentaries like Thrive and Zeitgeist and what all of these, uh, um, and there's a new Zeitgeist out there too, which you should check out, um, put out since the COVID, um, the COVID, um, I don't know what to call it anymore, narrative pandemic, who knows, um, the COVID thing has been really emerged this year. Um, but a lot of what these videos are showing is how deceived we have been, how manipulated we have been by the media, by the government, by who knows. And you can paint it in many different ways, but generally speaking, that's the context. We're being manipulated, we're being, our consciousness is being limited, we're being distorted. And the people in power are culpable in egregious, egregious corruption. You look at Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein and what's going on there, and their ties to pretty much <clears throat> every powerful person in the world, whether it's the Clinton, Bill Gates, you name it. You look at the Nexium scandal and how it's implicating the Bronfman family, one of the most powerful Canadian families. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. It's literally, when you, you zoom out, it's just like horrifying on one hand, but it's also amazing on the other because this is the dose of poison, you know, the ritual dose of poison. This isn't going to kill you, but it's going to put you through an experience where you're going to have to wrestle with things that are going to shatter your sense of reality. And it's really up to you if you want to resist that and just keep building up defenses, but inevitably everyone's sense of reality has to shatter right now. And there are those of us who have already done that willingly through various kinds of awakenings, whether spiritual or just life in general has wo awoken us to these uh, larger dimensions of reality or plant medicines like ayahuasca, for example. Um, so some of us who have been already, you know, have gone through this kind of experience before. We've gone through the cognitive dissonance of resistance and we've broken through the other side and I do believe those people, you know, can really hold leadership roles right now and can be uh, comforting to, to others and, and kind of ritual elders in their own right, you know, to help others as we transition through this really, really big radical shift in our consciousness. Um, but yeah, it's, it's inevitable that everyone's sense of reality has to change right now. We are being asked to see truth. This is the apocalypse. And apocalypse, if you didn't know, the etymology of the word means the time of great revealing. And the only reason people think it's the end of time is because the church fathers actually distorted the meaning a couple centuries ago to mean that. And I always joke that, well, for them it was the end of the world because they knew their grip on power with all the lies they've been telling us with religion um, were going to collapse at a certain time, which is now. So it's a really harrowing time in that sense. And increasingly, reality is getting more and more absurd because the forces of illusion are trying to constantly spin things a certain way to maintain this kind of matrix, this um, false sense of reality. And they're having to jump through many <laughs> increasing hoops. You know, one of the things that I saw recently that really shocked me is the fact that Bill Clinton was speaking at the Democratic National Convention recently. I mean, this guy was just outed in photographic evidence being on Epstein Island. I think he's flown there 26 times. Uh, Michelle Obama has praised Harvey Weinstein on video. They were very close friends. And yet we have, you know, these people being paraded before us still. Um, as if they haven't done anything wrong. And I think that's um, just increasingly absurd. And when you look at COVID, it's increasingly absurd when the amount of scientific facts continually come in to show us how wrong our responses have been to this epidemic. And so it's time to really see things as they really are. And it's not gonna be easy for, for everyone. But the longer you uh, delay that coming through, the more, I mean, you're just going to pretty much delay the inevitable, is basically what I'm trying to say. So, 
anyhow, that is all I really want to share today. Don't lose heart. Just trust that we are going through a process right now, an initiation. And, you know, just be aware that reality is also one of the initiations that we're going through, one of the revelations, is the awakening to the fact that reality is multidimensional. And what that means in a very powerful way for me is that more than one thing can be true at once. And this is why social media and just these political elections that put us into these camps of left and right and Democrat and Republican are really damaging right now because it's forcing us to have a very myopic view of truth where it's got to be one way or the other. And that's just not how truth operates. And I'll give you an example of that. Take COVID. For me, COVID is working on many different levels. So we've got the level of, for one, there's an actual, in my mind, an actual planned pandemic that is happening. If you don't believe me, it, go and look at this pandemic documentary. You're going to see some really profound factual research there that's going to at least make you question that this, this pandemic is at least being used, exploited by governments, pharmaceutical industry, and other nefarious entities for ill ends, not good things, for profit, for control, and uh, techno-tyranny, really, oppression over our species. So there's that. There's this awakening to the fact that, you know, the governments of our world have, for in my opinion, for a long time, been acting in a very clandestine, tyrannical manner, but they've hid that, they've obscured that with the miasma of the me media that sort of like hypnotized us into thinking things are a certain way about reality when in fact they're totally different. The second thing about COVID that I think is really interesting is that it's also, you know, good in the sense it's allowed us to take this sacred pause, you know, where all of humanity, especially if you lived in the West, this Protestant work ethic that we've sort of been imbued with, constantly working, busy bees, like, and the financial system has continually been like strangling us tighter and tighter that we have to work harder and harder and harder just to make ends meet. And that's all been put on a pause. And that's not to mention the fact that people are on the struggle right now financially. And that is asking us to show our powers of love like never before, to reach out if we have more than others and to share you know, to really care for each other. Um, but it's also allowing us to step out of that cycle of endless doing and to take some more time to just be, you know, to rest, to relax. Rest is just massive. So many people have been sharing how much rest they've been getting this year, and that's amazing because we don't rest enough. You know, and one of the, the great symptoms of damage of industrial civilization was this thing called... Um, I'm going to mispronounce it, but I think it was called uh, neuroanesthesia, which was a syndrome that was coined, I believe, just prior to the 20th century by doctors, which literally stated that um, they were seeing across the board the population of people who were moving into these industrial cities. First time we've had a migration to cities at that time, that people were starting to have a whole uh, spectrum of diseases started to happen. You know, immunity was being lowered, mental health issues, you name it. And they actually, because they had a more zoomed out lens with medicine at the time, they were able to see more of these general synth synthesis of flows rather than this like over-specialized classification that we have now with modern science. They were able, able to assess that what was happening was that when people were living in cities, you know, artificial light, for example, we've never had street lights before, people were living in villages, all this like stimulation was actually exhausting people's nervous systems. So people were overusing their sympathetic nervous system and their central nervous system was absolutely getting fucked up. And, you know, the nervous system is like your base level electricity that runs, you know, the energy of your whole being. So when that's messed up, it can lead to all kinds of disorders all over the place. And so this has been something, this has been a bane of our existence that we've been dealing with for a long time. We've been living in these unnatural environments and now we've been given the sacred pause 
to step away from that. And that is, is fucking awesome. And I'm so happy that I'm seeing more and more people like really reveling in that, really understanding like, man, I was supposed to actually like level off on my ambition this year and not be striving so much. Um, I know for me personally, like I couldn't be making this album. I, I've been dreaming of making this album Honor All Creation for five years, but I've been so damn busy touring all over the world and running all kinds of different events and trainings and, and I love the work that I do but man I was hitting walls that were kind of you know I was in denial of it didn't really hit me until I didn't have to do any of those things and then all of a sudden I was just like resting all the time and and the third thing the third truth that's happening right now and which kind of like dovetails with the second one is that the earth man is so happy right now like if you actually see some of the the science the environmental science that's been coming through about how she is regenerating so profoundly fast right now and this is something i've shared go back on some of my wisdom warrior videos you'll see this is one of the big themes that i've been tapping this year in 2020 but you know a new revelation for me is uh whatever blessed karma I have that I, I wound up in Costa Rica during this time because it feels amazing to be here because I'm, I'm literally just surrounded by, by the ocean, by nature, by the jungle and I've been absolutely tripping out like in these natural psychedelic moments of like lying naked in the summer, in, in, the, in the sunshine midday, you know, lying on my stomach and just watching ants, you know, like just taking time to watch ants and not having all this like monkey mindedness about having to do this or that or blah 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 I've just had so many times to just drop into nature and just witness her beauty and man I've, I've cried many tears on this actually it's been like really really profound to just feel mother earth and you know this is what Gaia awakening is all about it's the prophecy of the Gnostics that mother earth was going to literally be awakening And, you know, the truth of truth, uh, according to the Gnostics, a lot of these ancient civilizations, I mean, Gnosticism goes back 40,000 years based on some of the most ancient Magian orders of the planets, really like the oldest wisdom of the planet, the like original universal indigenous mystical wisdom that this planet is a living goddess and that we have to find a way to communicate with her and co-evolve with her because she's got a very defined purpose she wants to take us on this journey with her but the moment we start to abuse her to cut ourselves off from that symbi symbiotic connection which is what we've done as a species we've, li we've lived in cities where we've, buttre we've literally bust buttressed ourselves from the flows of nature we've become un unnatural ourselves and it's no small wonder that we've become so sickened as a culture and a society and a civilization. So really, the guy awakening, and the third thing about COVID is it's offering us this pivot point of like helping collapse an old system so that this new system can come into power. And I'm not talking about that techno-fascist bullshit that they're trying to roll out with like quantum tap two vaccines. I'm talking about this increasing migration of people away from cities back to village settlements, eco-villages, this is going to be a huge theme moving forward. And people just coming together in community and saying, you know what, fuck it. We don't need these, these governments anymore. We can be self-governing, sovereign communities ourselves. We can take much better care of the earth, much better take, take much better care of ourselves. And that's going to be the theme moving forward. It's going to be like this whole new earth civilization. And it's going to be absolutely glorious. Let me tell you, it's going to be absolutely glorious. And it's already starting to happen. So really, really excited about all that. So multidimensionality is, is the last thing I want to touch upon. You know, many things can be true at once. And that's why we've also got to be really tender with each other. You know, when you get people sharing like really crazy different opinions, um, we've got to be nimble. We've got to be flexible. We have to acknowledge that we all have different ideas about reality right now. And we've got to hold space, you know, for each other in that way. Um, and not be so... Um, vicious, you know. <laughs> On Facebook, man, people got to realize that thing is manipulating you. It's eroding your sense of empathy. It's vitiating your your humanity, your ability to have compassionate inquiry, and and you you. It's just causing us to other each other, you know, because we just see each other on these screens. We don't feel each other's like living presence, and that's that's awful, man. Like, get off Facebook, people. 
So, um, yeah, so just wanted to share some beautiful thoughts. I'm still alive and thriving. And I hope you're all living glorious lives in whatever way you are. And, and just like a shout out that those who are really challenged right now and who are really struggling, um, I just want to send you a lot of love and, and help each other right now. This is also like not just a phase, like, oh, we're just going through this COVID thing. We should help each other out. No, 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 no. That's like the way it should be. We've got to help each other out. This isn't about like having huge amounts of wealth that you you know can just like open up the vaults and like smile at your great wealth no it's like you share you keep things in flow we've got to be sharing and caring for each other a lot more so i really encourage you to find ways to care for each other this is a great initiation right now into a whole higher dimensionality and expression of love and if you haven't heard it already, my song, Oh My Goddess, the first single on my new album, Honor All Creation, is on Spotify, it's on YouTube. Go have a listen, send me a comment somewhere, let me know how it makes you feel. It's a beautiful Ode to the Goddess. And the title track, Honor All Creation, is also out. It's, um, only if it's not on Spotify, but it's on YouTube, and it's on um, my SoundCloud as well. And, uh, you know, hunt me down online, I've got lots of meditations and wisdom warrior talks on my youtube channel go have a listen and just sending you much love goddess is great gaia is glorious and be glorious be magnificent